Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to today's webinar, uh, where we're going to go through the basics of PyTechPlot and loading your data directly into TechPlot without uh, a loader uh, that uh, has been developed by us. Uh, we're really excited to show you this content and show how you can use the power of TechPlot to load data that TechPlot 360 can't necessarily load natively. Uh, presenters today are myself. Uh, I'm Scott Fowler. I'm the TechPlot product manager, so I'm responsible for TechPlot 360 and uh, its halo of products around it. So that would be TechPlot Chorus, PyTechPlot, uh, the TechIO library, which can be used for writing data uh, directly to disk. I'm also joined today by Devin Simpson. Uh, she's technical product engineer and uh, really led uh, the PyTechPlot team. Uh, in creating this incredible product for you. And she's going to be on hand to answer questions. So please do uh, answer or ask questions during the webinar uh, using the question pane. Uh, she'll be able to uh, type those in and she's going to assist with questions at the uh, end of the webinar here as well. Uh, we are recording this webinar and it will be available on our website in a few days. So I know that uh, some of you may have other meetings that you have to get to. Uh, I do appreciate your attention, but uh, do look for that recording. Okay, so for those of you who are new to TechPlot and are just learning about our company, I'll go through a quick introduction of who we are. Uh, TechPlot was founded in 1981, so we've been in the industry quite a long time. We were founded by a couple of Boeing engineers who were writing CFD codes, and they realized that they needed a way to visualize the results so they hired an engineer who's still with TechPlot today who created TechPlot, uh, the plotting package, uh, which has evolved into TechPlot 360. Uh, we've really grown during that time. We have about 47,000 customers worldwide. We're known as the most complete desktop solution for visualization and analysis. Uh, TechPlot 360 can uh, do 2D, 3D, line plotting, even polar plotting. And then with the addition of PyTechPlot, we've really increased the analysis that you can do. Uh, and we are dedicated to saving you time. So how do we save you time and how do we help you get your work done faster? Uh, well, number one, we come up with new technologies. Uh, the sizzle file format is one. Uh, the uh, sizzle file format uh, allows you to load less data, the disk being the major bottleneck in post-processing, CFD post-processing. So the image that you see on the left here uh, is a representation of the data that's loaded in your traditional post processor with your traditional file format in the upper left. Uh, when you want to draw a slice, most post processors and most file formats uh, need to load the entirety of the volume data. The sizzle format allows you to load just the cells that you need to create that slice. So we're loading less data off disk, which means faster load times. We're also using less RAM, which means you can get more done with fewer resources. Along with TechPlot uh, 360, when you have a Tech Plus license, that's our active maintenance, you get access to TechPlot Chorus, which is uh, an auxiliary tool that interacts with TechPlot 360 to allow you to understand ensembles of data. So if you're doing, say, an aero database or you're doing a design study, uh, different in input conditions or different geometric shapes, you can use TechPlot Chorus to easily understand that uh, vast amount of data that you're producing. And then PyTechPlot, which we're going to be talking uh, about today, uh, is a scripting language that uh, we've developed. Uh, it was first introduced in 2017 uh, to allow you to automate TechPlot. Uh, and it does more than automation. It allows for advanced analysis as well because you get access to the raw data that's in TechPlot and you can push raw data right into TechPlot. Uh, and that's, that's really uh, what we're going to focus on today. Okay, so today's agenda, we'll go through what is PyTechPlot. Uh, for those of you who are new uh, to it, we're going to uh, give a quick demo of loading some earthquake data from the uh, 2010 earthquake in Haiti, uh, which TechPlot doesn't have a data loader for. So uh, Devin actually wrote uh, the script to load this data and push it right into TechPlot so we can analyze it. Uh, and then we're going to kind of deconstruct how we uh, how we did this. So we're going to describe the data organization uh, and the APIs of PyTechPlot. We're going to show a really simple example of loading line data and then we're going to put this all together and show how you uh, how we loaded these 
uh, Haitian earthquake files and put them into Teflon. All right, so we'll just jump out of PowerPoint and we'll go right into uh, demonstration mode here. So first off, what is PyTechPlot? So again, PyTechPlot is an API to TechPlot360. Uh, we have a lot of information about it on our website, uh, techplot.com slash product slash PyTechPlot. Uh, and it can actually interact with TechPlot in two ways. It can be run in what we call batch mode, uh, where everything happens you know, on the command line without loading the GUI at all, or it can run in connected mode, which you're going to see me demonstrate today, where you can actually interact with TechPlot 360 and run a script simultaneously. It also has the ability to record Python scripts, so you don't need to memorize all of the API. If you don't know something, you can just start recording do your actions in TechPlot and uh, get a good start there. So when using PyTechPlot, the first thing you need to know is it's a separate installation from TechPlot 360. It does rely on TechPlot 360. So first do your TechPlot 360 installation and then uh, techplot.com slash docs slash PyTechPlot. And these are built right into the TechPlot 360 user interface as well. Uh, you have all the installation notes for the various platforms. Each platform is a little bit different in, in its setup, uh, so do pay attention to that. Uh, but this is a really incredible guide, uh, complete with quick start, examples, uh, and a very extensive reference uh, for all of the functions that we have. Okay, so quick introduction to PyTechPlot. Now let's talk about uh, this Haitian earthquake data. So. We wanted to create a demo today that showed loading data that TechPlot doesn't normally handle. And uh, so we, we found uh, some interesting data. We're focusing on line data today because it's the easiest uh, concept to, uh, to understand. Uh, so we went to the Strong Motion Center and they had uh, a set of files that we were able to download. And the uh, file format that we're going to be looking at today is what they call the SMC format. Uh, which uh, is described on their website uh, here. And they're, just to break down this file format, it's time series data, uh, and each file that they produce is one variable. Uh, so uh, the, the values that we care about are all uh, down, in, down in this section. Uh, the variable name that we care about is right up here at the top. And then uh, there's a component that we care about, which is effectively uh, a direction component. So think of you know, an, uh, an X, Y, Z axis, it's going to be orthogonal, uh, orthogonal values. So uh, in our case, we're going to be loading three different directions. Uh, the data in this region is, uh, is metadata that we don't necessarily care about for, for our loader. So TechPlot360 doesn't really have a loader that can handle this format. So that's that's what we've done is we've we've built one to do this out of Python. So uh, let's bring up. So here I have TechPlot 360, and in my command window, uh, you can see that I have a number of SMC files. Uh, each one of these contain uh, the the data that we described here. And uh, through the magic of Python, we'll just run Python and a Python script. And if I got everything working correctly. There we go. So it's connecting to the live version of TechPlot 360 and then it loaded the data. So I didn't have to go through uh, the load data dialog uh, or, or anything and uh, the data is loaded right away. Now one of the prerequisites here is uh, I do have to let TechPlot 360 know to list two connections coming from the Python script. Uh, and I had done that previously by checking this box, accept connections. Now, if I go into the data set information dialog, I can see that I have uh, one zone and all of my uh, all of my variables. So for instance, displacement, uh, I have three displacement variables in each one of those orthogonal directions. Okay, so uh, let's let's jump into a description of uh, I'm going to give you now a tour of the Python APIs and uh, give you a description of, of how to interact uh, with TechPlot. So let's get uh, it's the wrong window. Here we are. 
Okay, so uh, let's talk about the data organization. I'm going to get TechFlop 360 and this browser uh, side by side so we can see these together. It makes it a little bit easier to understand. So data organization uh, is important. So TechPlot has this concept of frames and then a data set and then zones and variables. So in this case, uh, this object is my frame. Within the frame, I have a data set, which you can see here in the data set information dialog. So one data set in here. Uh, and then within the data set, I have zones and variables. And what we're describing here in, in this image is that a data set, uh, every zone in the data set has to have the same uh, set of variables defined for it. And each zone in a data set can have a different set of values. So if we think about this in terms of line data, let's say I have just a single column of data. Let's say I had, say, a, a pressure tap on a, on, on a wing in a wind tunnel. Well, that's going to be recording pressure variables or pressure values. It's just one column of data. Well, TechPlot needs a second column of data. So uh, you're going to apply, say, an ordinal value for the x-axis. So we always need two values supplied to TechPlot, even if your data is effectively uh, feels like just a, a, a single column. So for this t value, we include a time value, say, if you were in a wind tunnel, or just ordinal values, one, two, three, four, five. Now, if you have multiple columns of data, again, you can have just a single zone, uh, and multiple columns of data. And that's exactly what we've been, done here with this, uh, this earthquake data. Uh, now, it is important that if you are in this position that all columns have the same number of values. Uh, if you do have columns that are have different numbers of values, different count, uh, then you'd, in that case, want to use multiple zones. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're actually going to run uh, Python directly from uh the the web browser here using jupyter notebooks if you're not familiar with jupyter notebooks they're pretty cool i really love using them in my day-to-day -day workflows uh, to create and uh, develop python scripts so the first step in understanding our python api is you have to load the techplot module which is just simply done by import techplot as tp so we're going to give it a little alias so we don't have to type techplot everywhere we'll just type tp instead so i'll execute that then we're going to connect to TechPlot. We're going to clear out the data that's already there, and we're going to uh, load one of our example files, the Onera M6 wing. Uh, so you can see that that's, that's been done. And you can see that when I loaded that data, I now have a handle to the data set. I can also get a handle to the data set from the active frame. So remember that hierarchy of frame, data set, and then below the data set, zones and variables. And we'll print some information about it. And that information is also available right here in the dataset information dialog. So you can see that I have a dataset title uh, here, which is right there. And then I have zones and variables, fluid volume and wind surface, and then all of the all of the variables. And I can also iterate over the zones. I can get access to each of the individual zones. Uh, this is done through uh, dataset.zones. Uh, this does return a Python generator. If you're new to Python, uh, this is something that uh, can only be iterated through once. So if you do need to hold on to the zones for uh, and use that list multiple times, you can uh, just cast it to a list. But it'll show you the information that you uh, get out of uh, out of that. Uh, one of the neat things is you can also use wildcard search. Uh, so here I'm searching for any zone that has the name wing in it. Well, we only had one, so uh, we get my just one wing surface. I can do the same thing with variables. Uh, so here I get a list of all of the variables uh, just by iterating over dataset.variables or get the set of variables that start with the word momentum. You can see that that gave me just the subset. Okay, now here is where uh, PyTechPlot gets really powerful because you can actually gain access to the raw data. Uh, so uh, first, I get a hold of the zone. So I'm asking for the, uh, the zone called wing surface, and then I want the values associated with the variable temperature. And this is going to give me uh, a 
array type. Uh, this is a tech plot data type that, uh, that we've included in the uh, Python or PyTechPlot API, and this just has a handle to the data. So this doesn't have all of the data yet, it just gives you some, some information about it. So we've got the number of values, uh, and we can easily get the min and max. You can see that we can access zones and uh, the variable values in a number of different ways. So you can access it by name uh, here. You can access it by index. Uh, so zone one uh, values 10. So this is going to be the 10th variable. One thing to note here is that PyTechPlot does use zero base values. So in the GUI, wing surface is shown as two. Convert that to zero base and it's one. The temperature variable is 11. Convert that to zero base and it's 10. You can see that this returns the same number of points and the same min-max. And you can also see that min-max right here in the GUI. And you can also hold on to these by object. So I've accessed them by name, but then I'm holding on to them as, as handles or objects. So I, for that zone and for that variable, I'm getting the values. And this is giving me, the, again, the same information. Okay, you can also spin this around and ask for the variable values, uh, variable first. So I specify the variable object followed by the values call with a zone in there. So there's a lot of flexibility, a lot of different ways that you can call these APIs to try to make it uh, as easy and as flexible as possible for you. Let me bring up the data set information dialog again. And I want you to keep an eye on the min max here because we're actually going to alter the values in TechPlot. So if you know if you have a CFD simulation, you don't like the results, you can change them, right? Uh, everybody knows that's uh, acceptable. Not really. Uh, so let's get a hold of the wing surface temperature values. We're going to ask for the min max to show those values. And let's say that these were in um, centigrade and we want to convert it to Fahrenheit. So we're going to pull the data values out of the, the array object into uh, an array in Python space. Uh, this is going to actually return a NumPy array because I have NumPy installed. Uh, NumPy is a really great uh, Python module. If you don't have it installed, I would highly suggest uh, that you install it. Uh, it does actually make uh, PyTechPlot faster because it's a very fast library. And we're going to use Python to modify those values in the Python space, and then we're going to push the values back into TechPlot uh, using the syntax. So we'll execute that. You can see that the values came out, they got converted uh, to Fahrenheit, and you can see that the values changed right here in Tech One. Okay, so that's a really quick uh, introduction to kind of that hierarchy of data, right? So uh, you have a frame, data set, zones and variables, and uh, you're accessing uh, the zones and variables, uh, the values using a syntax like this. Okay, so now let's uh, create some data out of thin air and uh, create a plot. So uh, in this case, uh, I'm going to do a, a simple line of uh, the cosine function. So I have a number of modules that I want to bring in. Uh, I'm going to connect to TechPlot and I'm going to do a new layout to clean the slate. Uh, and then I'm going to define my values. So again, I'm going to create my set of x values, which are going to span between minus 2 pi and 2 pi. Uh, I'm only going to do 20 values along, along the way there. And then I'm going to compute the cosine of those values. Uh, so you can see the results there. <clears throat> and now remember that we need, we need a data set. So frame, data set, zones and variables. So first thing I need to do is I need to create a data set. And this data set can have a name. Uh, I didn't come up with a, uh, a nice name for it, so we'll just call that data set name. And then just give it X and Y variables. And then I need to add a zone to that. Uh, that zone I'm going to call cosine uh, of 20 values, and I'm going to give it a, a shape. So an ordered zone, and this is going to be what we call an I ordered zone. So it's just gonna be uh, a line effectively, uh, and it's going to have 20 values. Okay, so now we have a data set and a zone. Now I need to populate the variables with data. So again, I'm getting that handle to 
the X values and the handle to the Y values, and then I'm just stuffing those values in. And finally, I'm telling TechPlot that I want you to plot these as an XY line plot. And now uh, we have our plot right in TechPlot. The cosine doesn't look great, so let's uh, do the same thing, but with more samples. And one of the things that you'll notice here is I'm not creating a data set. Uh, each frame can have only one data set in it. So here I'm adding a zone to that one data set. Uh, so again, a thousand values. So we're going to have a much smoother line. And then at the end, uh, we're going to use a, a little plotting call to make sure that we add a line map to represent that data. And then we'll make sure that the data fits to the frame. So now you can see this green line has uh, a much nicer looking line. Okay, now the great thing about uh, PyTechPlot and using TechPlot in this connected mode is you're, you're done writing your script, right? You know, with other scripting languages, uh, plotting scripting languages, you have to then write uh, your entire script to uh, do other formatting. Say I wanted a legend on here. Uh, I can go right into the line legend and add the legend. That, you know, I want it in a specific location. Uh, you can see I forgot to... Uh, I didn't add a good name for uh, for this map, so uh, we'll just uh, give it give it a name here. And I can do this work right in uh, the TechBlot 360 GUI. Get to the final result. I can save this as a TechBlot style sheet and apply that style sheet right in the macro. So I can do most of my work uh, actually in the GUI. Okay, so, so now that we've seen uh, a really simple example of how to create the data and put it into TechPlot, let's pull this all back together and we'll show you uh, what we did for uh, the earthquake data. Now let me give you a quick reminder of what that data looked like. So on disk, we have uh, a number of SMC files and I, I think we had uh, nine files and here are three of them. These are all related to the displacement, so displacement of the earth in those ordinal directions, right? So here we're, we care about displacement, we care about component, and we care about the time series data from line 32 on down. And we have two other files that have similar information. So again, displacement, component in the up direction or displacement in the up direction, uh, displacement in 360 direction, whichever direction that is for, uh, for this case, okay? So we're worried about information on the first line, the fifth line, and the 32nd line. So let's take a look at the uh, take a look at the script. So again, we're going to import the modules that we need, and uh, we've written a function to parse uh, that file. Uh, so you can see that uh, we open the file, we read all of the information out of that file. We're extracting that variable name from uh, the first line. Again, this is zero based. So you see the, so it's, think of those lines as uh, minus one. We extract that component uh, from the sixth line, and then we extract the time series values uh, from lines 32 on down. And this is going to return the variable name, uh, which is a concatenation of the variable on line one and the component on line six. And then it's also going to return a list of values. Okay, and in that folder, we did have a number of SMC files. So we're going to use uh, the Python module glob to collect those SMC files together into a list. We're going to loop over each one of those and we're going to read those values and we're going to put it into a Python dictionary. And you can see the rough uh, organization of it. So the first element in that dictionary is our first file, corrected accelerogram 90, so that's the component, and then the list of values and so on and so, so forth for the uh, remainder of the variables. Okay, now finally, we're going to push that data into PyTechPlot. So again, like we've done before, we're going to make sure that this script is connected to TechPlot 360. We're going to clear the layout and uh, then we're going to get a handle to the current frame. We'll create a data set for this. And here you notice I'm only adding one variable. Uh, we're going to add the other variables further down in the script. And 
none of these files supplied a time variable, so we're just going to use the number of values uh, in, uh, in each one of these uh, files. Uh, all of these files have the same number of values, so uh, we're going to have just one zone. Um, and add that time, that set of time values. And then for the rest, we're going to loop over these results. We'll add a variable using variable name, and then we'll stuff the values into, uh, into the arrays, into the variables. Okay, so we'll just execute this. And you see now I have the results, just like I did at the beginning of the, uh, the presentation where we ran it right from the uh, command prompt. Uh, and again, we can go into the mapping style dialog and we can set up the style as we as we want. So let's look at uh, all of the displacements. I'll just right click and say show select only. And then do a view fit. Looks like two of those lines are the same color, so we'll uh, deduplicate that really quickly. Let's make this one blue. Okay, and then I could save this as a style sheet and apply that uh, to uh, another data set. Okay, so this was a really simple example of loading line data. Again, TechBlot didn't have this loader, but we wanted to analyze it in TechBlot. So uh, I hope you've learned a lot here. I know it's a lot to, uh, to take in in a short period of time, uh, but we do have a great support staff that can, that can help you out. Okay, so let's jump back into uh, the PowerPoint presentation uh, and go into uh, questions and answers. So, uh, Devin, I know that you've been uh, fielding a number of questions while we've been going along here. Uh, do you want to help me with? Uh, why don't you read off the questions here, and I'll I'll, I'll do the answers for for the slides, and then we'll go into uh, ones that have come in during the during the webinar. Yeah. So the first question would be: Can uh, PyTech plot make a 3D scatter plot? Yeah, so PyTechPlot can really make any plot that TechPlot360 can make. Uh, you can actually even make more plots uh, with PyTechPlot than 360 can make uh, if you're clever about it. You know, we've used PyTechPlot to create histograms and pie charts and 3D bar charts. So uh, it's it's pretty powerful. Um, the really neat thing about PyTechPlot is, as I mentioned earlier, you can record PyTechPlot scripts. So if you don't know how to make a 3D scatter plot, using our APIs, all you have to do is go into the user interface and hit record, and uh, it'll help you get there. Uh, can PyTechPlot compute a time average? Yeah, so uh, we've, we've had this question uh, a, a number of times coming in. It's not built into TechPlot360, but we do have a, a time average script available on our GitHub site. So if you just search GitHub PyTechPlot or GitHub TechPlot, uh, you'll find our uh, our GitHub site. We have a script there called Time Average. Uh, let me, I think I have the script up in another window. Uh, and more specifically, this is the average of um, the same uh, or the same grid over time. So this works for two and three D grids. I believe one D as well. Yeah, yeah. So uh, right on our GitHub site, we have. Uh, this script here, timeaverage.py, uh, and uh, it's a pretty short script. Most of most of the actual work is done in another Python script uh, available on uh, our GitHub called uh, tputils and uh, tpmath. So if you want to use that time average, you're going to have to download uh, these other uh, auxiliary scripts. Uh, but there's there's a lot available uh, in these guys here. Um, and then we got a um, another question come in. Rather than averages, can PyTechPlot do time integration over a surface? Uh, that's a good question. So uh, we do have the ability to do integrations with uh, the CFD analyzer. Uh, so that's under the Analyze menu in TechPlot 360. That can be automated using PyTechPlot, and then the results can be. Uh, collected from from that, so the integration is actually being done in C code, so it's very fast, and then the results could be uh, collected. Devin, do you have any other thoughts on that one? Uh, no, I think you uh, the I guess the w there's one step in the time average uh, script that's actually taking the average, 
and that would be fairly easily replaced with an integration. Um, okay. Uh, can PyTechPlot automatically do data probes over time? Uh, yeah, so again, we do have uh, one of those scripts on the GitHub site is called tpprobe.py uh, that can allow you to specify a, uh, a specific node number or a specific cell number to track. Uh, but you might also want to try uh, in the TechBot 360 user interface uh, under the tools menu, there's an option called probe to create time series plot. Uh, and that might be faster because all of that code is going to be running right in uh, C code rather than uh, running in Python. Uh, and this question also had a follow-up of, uh, can you then write the results to a CSV file? And certainly you can, right? As we showed, you can gain access to the raw data. Uh, you can write it to CSV. TechPlot 360 also under the tools menu has an option to, it's called write data as formatted text, which can write to CSV. Is there a Python script to unite multiple meshes? Yeah, so uh, this one uh, is called uh, combine fezones.py. Uh, this one uh, only works with fe data because uh, I, I don't think we've got this working with polyhedral data. So if you have classic finite elements, so that would be like quads, bricks, tetrahedrons, triangles. Uh, this script uh, will work for you. This script is really just serves as an example. So it loads one of our example data sets. So uh, you may have to modify it slightly to either load your data or uh, update it so it uses data that's already loaded. Can we achieve high quality videos with Python or gen or and show how to generate plots using PyTechPlot? Yeah, so these were two separate questions that, uh, <coughs> excuse me, that came in and, and they're kind of in the same vein. So yeah, PyTechPlot, uh, like I said at the beginning, PyTechPlot requires TechPlot 360 to be installed. So PyTechPlot utilizes the same backend engine that TechPlot 360 uses. So image and video quality will be the same as if you exported directly from TechBlock 360. Uh, and we have a number of commands available to, uh, to export images. Uh, let me just bring up the, uh, the documentation uh, really quickly and, and show you. Uh, I'll just type in export. So you can see that we have a number of uh, image formats that you can export. Uh, we find that Ping tends to be one of the better, uh, better ones, especially for uh, 3D images, translucency, et cetera. Uh, and then a, a number of animation formats as well. Uh, MPEG-4 tends to be uh, the, one of the more popular ones. So you can use these APIs to uh, export uh, images and movies directly from PyTechBlock. So when I'm exporting a sequence of images using a script, is there a difference between macros or PyTechPlot? Yeah, so I, I wasn't quite sure what the what the uh, person asking the question was trying to get after, so a little bit of a shotgun approach. So really the answer is no. Uh, PyTechPlot and macros, again, use the same TechPlot 360 engine, so there's no going to be no difference in image quality, but there may be slight differences of perf in performance. Uh, right, so TechPlot macros and PyTechPlot, they're both interpreted languages and that, uh, you know, the speed at which the language can be interpreted and executed uh, will be different. Uh, so you may, you may see some uh, performance difference there. Uh, and then PyTechPlot in batch mode runs faster than PyTechPlot in connected mode. And, and that's important to know. So PyTechPlot in connected mode is actually doing a socket connection between uh, Python and 360. So there's uh, there's some communication cost uh, that can slow down uh, connected mode, but connected mode is quite powerful. So it's it's important that you understand that you can run in both modes. Okay, uh, Devin, before we close out the webinar, were there any other interesting questions that came in uh, live yeah. during the webinar that we should answer? 
So there's one, can I write files that will be as subroutine and called as main files? I'm not quite sure what that is, but I'm thinking that you can uh, reference Python and Py uh, from multiple things like the TP math. Yeah, I, I, I think that's a lot like uh, like these TP math, uh, TP probe uh, functions. So if let's let's take a look at uh, time average again, and you can see that this one uh, imports TP math and TP utils, uh, and then just just calls it. Uh, and if we were to jump into uh, TP utils, for example. Uh, that that function in there, you can see that this uh, doesn't have any. Uh, it doesn't have a, a main section of Python. All it all it has is functions. So yeah, you can import uh, one of these and uh, and then use it from your your normal Pytech plot scripts. Um, and then is uh, the Excel loader available on Linux? <laughs> Uh, no, the Excel loader is not, and the the main reason for that is the uh, the, the code that we uh, that we had to use to handle the Excel loader uh, is Windows only code. So there is no way for us to uh, make the Excel loader work on uh, on Linux. Now that doesn't mean that uh, we couldn't update the loader with maybe some other library, but uh, we, we haven't had requests for it. Uh, there are some pretty amazing uh, Python packages out there uh, that can load Excel files. Um, so you might take a look for one of those if you really need to handle Excel uh, on the Linux side. Um, and then there was a couple of questions um, about accessing the min and maxes. Um, for, for a particular cell, and um, I've put in a link uh, in the responses in the um, in the chat um, to a knowledge base that uh, and a handy scripts uh, example of locating the min max values within um, within a 3D space. Yeah, Devin, I, I think that's, is that this script here, uh, display max variable value? Yep. Yeah. So uh, again, available out on handy scripts to to find the maximum value. And and this is this is a question that uh, comes up pretty often. How do I identify the, the min value and the max value locations? And uh, Devin, you know, as, as part of the product management team, that's probably something that we should uh, start looking at adding uh, directly into the TechPlot 360 user interface. So it's good to hear these questions come in and, and hear some continuity between uh, our, uh, all of our customers on that. Yeah, that looks like all of the questions in the chat, so. Um... Okay. Well, thank you all for your time today. Uh, I appreciate the attention. I appreciate all the really good questions. Uh, I hope you get a lot of uh, use out of uh, PyTech Plot. Uh, and uh, it, it can be a bit of a learning curve. There's a pretty large API there. So please don't hesitate to contact our support staff. Uh, North America, support at techplot.com. We have staff available uh, five days a week, 6.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, and then we also have support staff uh, based in Germany at support-eu at techplot.com. So uh, that may work out better for you uh, if you're uh, in the closer to the European time zone. Okay. <laughs> now it looks like one of our distributors is online. He says uh, you can also contact ATS4I uh, in Brazil. Uh, and we do have uh, distributors worldwide uh, so do go to uh, the TechPlot website and look for the distributor nearest you. That's a really good uh, good point. Thanks, Guillermo. Appreciate it. Okay. Thanks all. Thanks, Devin, for helping out with the questions. Uh, please don't hesitate to contact us anytime. Bye bye.